Good afternoon, and welcome to the State University of New York College of Optometry's 2020 White Coat Ceremony. Uh, I'd like to particularly to welcome our students, families, and friends, and we're very pleased that you're able to join us for this event. And let me begin by congratulating each of you, the members of the class of 2022, upon the completion of your first couple of years of study during which you are prepared to receive your white coat and to become more engaged in the care of our patients. This event is a celebration, a celebration of your maturation as healthcare providers and your acceptance as a member of the healthcare team. The path for you has probably been a bit more challenging than perhaps any other class in my memory. You've had to focus on your professional progress in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, social unrest challenging our nation, our city, and our community on issues of race and equity, and work while hearing the constant drumbeat of divisive political discourse. Your resilience and your achievements are admirable, and I congratulate you. So clearly this year's event is a bit different from prior years, not simply because we have to do it virtually or even a bit belatedly but because it's occurring within this context and within this environment. It's a context within which all aspects of our lives seem to be intertwined with public health and healthcare behaviors. It's a context within which population health and healthcare disparities are ever present challenges and part of our daily conversations and lives. This is a context that highlights the importance of our roles as care providers and our responsibility to the community. And it's because of this context, perhaps, that more than any previous class at this stage of training, I believe that your understanding of your responsibility as future optometrists is deep, and your awareness of the link between health and the quality of life will forever be an important part of the care that you provide. This event signifies a new beginning and a new phase in your development as care providers, while emphasizing a deep and significant responsibilities to the communities we serve and the patients you see. I have great faith that you will rise to this occasion and assume these responsibilities with commitment and perhaps more importantly, with compassion. In closing, on a lighter note, I'd actually like to share a conversation I had a couple of years ago during a diner, do, dining with Doc's evening with a few of our students. We spoke about the white coat ceremony and I was educated. I was educated that this was as much about discarding the blue coat, perhaps, as it was about donning the white one. So in addition to congratulating you on your donning of the white coat, let me offer my congratulations to you on discarding your blue coat. So to get on with the program, enough from me. It is with great pleasure that I introduce Dr. Michael McGovern, Chief Medical Officer of the University Eye Center. Dr. McGovern. Thank you, Dr. Heath. Let me be among the first to congratulate you, the members of the class of 2022, on reaching this important milestone in your professional education. Back in the first week of January, when we started planning for May's white coat ceremony, the words tele, virtual, and Zoom were not part of our daily vocabulary. Much has changed over the course of the past six months, but the important thing is, is that we are all here now, recognizing and celebrating the accomplishments and talents of these dedicated students. The white coat ceremony is actually a relatively new occurrence. The full-fledged ceremony started right here in New York at Columbia University's College of Physicians and Surgeons in 1993. Since that time, it has grown in popularity and has become an annual ritual at health profession schools around the country and indeed the world. Other speakers today will touch upon the significance of various aspects of this occasion. I would like to share a few words about the coat itself, the history, the symbolism, and the responsibility that comes with it. I will venture a guess that many of you, particularly those of you around my age or older, will recognize the gentleman on the left. He was a character on a very popular 1970s TV show that focused on the late 19th century. Dr. Hiram Baker was the only physician in the small town of Walnut Grove in Little House on the Prairie series. You will notice he's dressed almost entirely in black, and this was the typical garb of physicians in that time. And here is a very famous 1875 painting by American artist Thomas Aikens titled The Gross Clinic. You will once again notice the attire of the physicians, completely in black, as well as the apparent lack of infection control measures. Prior to the late 1800s, seeking medical advice was a last resort and rarely benefited the patient. It usually consisted of worthless cures and was frequently a precursor to death. So an encounter with the physician was seen as a formal and often morbid occurrence, hence the black attire. 
Unlike medicine, science was held in very high esteem and scientists were more respected than physicians. This started to change for medicine in the second half of the 19th century. In 1860, French chemist and biologist Louis Pasteur theorized that invisible germs caused infections. It's incredible to think that was only 160 years ago, not that long ago. Five years later, British surgeon Joseph Lister pioneered the idea of sterile surgery and introduced antisepsis, which was a real game changer. And in 1901, army physician Walter Reed confirmed that mosquitoes transmitted yellow fever during the construction of the Panama Canal. It was discoveries like these that moved medicine from the realm of mysticism and quackery to bioscience, and medical providers started to wear white, symbolic of the importance of cleanliness, but also importantly, it emphasized the transition to a more scientific approach to modern medicine. The practice of wearing white would culminate with physicians adopting the most recognizable symbol of science, the white laboratory coat. Here's another famous painting by Thomas Aikens from 1889 titled The Agnew Clinic. It captures a surgical scene just 14 years after the previous painting I had shown you. And now you will notice the physicians are obviously all in white gowns and coats. Over the past 120 years, the white coat has become a very powerful symbol for patients, one of compassion, trust, and hope that the wearer will use their training and resources to treat and heal them. Take my word that when you return to the clinics wearing your white lab coats, patients are very likely going to treat you differently than they did just a few months prior when you were in blue. And while their level of respect will probably be greater, so will their expectations. Never overlook or underestimate the symbolism that the power of the white coat has. Receiving your white coat is such an important milestone in your journey toward becoming doctors that as part of this ceremony, you will also recite the optometric oath and commit yourself to the highest standards of our profession, accepting the responsibilities, the obligations, and the sacrifices that go with the privilege of practicing optometry and caring for patients. Never forget, with great power comes great responsibility. And yes, Spider-Man is my favorite superhero. Congratulations. It is now my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, who also happens to be someone I want to acknowledge for the time and effort she put into the planning of today's program. She has been meticulous with her contributions to this event to ensure her classmates, as well as their families and friends, have a wonderful and memorable white coat experience. Her professionalism and dedication have made her a pleasure to work with. I know her parents and her sister Melissa are watching this live, and they should be extremely proud of her the president of the class of 2022, intern Julie Song. Long, long ago, in a semester far, far away, Neil Sharma was jumped by a flying cockroach during 8 a.m. lecture. And while this day may seem as though it occurred eons ago, it was just yesterday that we were lining up to get our ID pictures taken and labeling our equipment so no one would accidentally swap our MPC sticks. Too bad I think every single person is still missing at least two different items from their original briefcases. Do you remember how the room would buzz with nervousness and excitement before every OT quiz when Dr. Rosenfield would one by one by one hand out our quizzes? And what about how your stomach would turn over when your name was called on 14 to start your ret competency? I do not miss those moments, but I will be grateful for RAP's benevolent curve forever. Through blood, sweat, and many, many tears, we have made it through. Test distance divided by the distance at which the letter subtends five minutes of arc. Is it clear? And struggling with undilated 90D. And not to mention indicating where diuretics act on the renal tubule. And while I think I still have to dig into the deepest depths of my memory to pull out Henderson Hasselbach, at least we now know what to do when we have to grade a hyphema or differentiate between anterior and posterior blepharitis. And thank goodness, we had Timmy to compress all of the lectures for one note takers and Malin to solve all of our simulator problems along the way. I am so grateful for the picnics in Central Park, the ice skating across the street, and one infamous bottomless brunch to remind me of how much fun we have together as a class. And as 2022 takes the clinic by storm, I just wanna take a moment to really appreciate each and every one of you and say that I am so, so proud of how much we have accomplished to get to where we are today. I mean, how many people can really say that they're in 19th grade? The amount of information that we've learned so far has been incredible and the finish line doesn't seem so far on this side of the mountain. 
And as I move forward to grab my BIO by its headlight, I will never forget apex to apex, shake a baby, shake it, and flattery will get you everywhere. Congrats 2022, special shout out to all the faculty and staff who helped us get to where we are today. And happy birthday, Annie. And I'm gonna hand it off to Dr. Troilo, Dean and Vice President of Academic Affairs. Thank you, Julie. Welcome faculty, students, families, and friends of the class of 2022. Congratulations on reaching this significant step in your optometric education. Today marks an important transition for you as you begin your career as, health, as a healthcare professional. It is, not, it is no longer just about only grades and assignments. It is about putting what you have learned into practice to help real patients. Patients who need you and put their trust in you, who are now responsible for the care of others. These past six months have made your transition to clinical care more challenging than any other class before you. And we fully expect that these challenges will continue. But we believe that you will meet these challenges and ultimately they will make you stronger and better clinicians. You still have much to learn, but you have many of the finest optometrists, ophthalmologists and faculty in the world to guide you. Listen to them, learn from them and always seek their assistance to do the right thing for your patients. Now it is my pleasure to introduce the Chair of Biological and Vision Science, Dr. Viswanathan, and the Chair of Clinical Education, Dr. Madonna, who have a few more words for you about your foundational training and the transition to the clinical education. Congratulations, class of 2022, on your transition from the classroom to the clinic. While this is the next step in the logical sequence towards you becoming a doctor, remember that the classroom portion of your education is not over yet. It will continue at least for another year. In this coursework, the faculty have provided you with the basic science and other theoretical clinical knowledge, as well as the procedural skills that are essential to prepare you for your entry into the clinic. It may not be very obvious to you, but this coursework also plays a foundational role in developing discipline and rigor in your thinking skills, including logical reasoning, critical appraisal, and problem solving. The knowledge that you have been imparted and the skills that you have learned not only helps you to become a good clinician, but will also serve as the foundation for your lifelong learning as you adapt to the ever-expanding knowledge base. So congratulations again, and good luck on the National Board exam that's coming up next spring. Hello, class of 2022. Congratulations from the Department of Clinical Education on reaching this important milestone. However, let's take a step back and recognize what this day truly signifies. For much of your lives, your thoughts and goals have centered on you. What college will I attend? Will I get into SUNY? How did I do on that last exam or assessment? This ceremony signifies that all that has changed. From this point forward, when you are in the exam room, your priority should be one thing, the patient, no, the person in that chair. That person has entrusted you with their vision and with their health. They've shared privileged information about themselves and their family. They've asked you to care for them. So when you're having one of those days, when you're running behind, when your supervisor is providing you with feedback that you feel is unjust, when you have to code, bill, chart, examine, assess, and you wonder whether you can get through the day, think about that person. And if you could say to yourself, you have given them everything you've got, that you've affected their lives, then you will have had a successful day. 
the faculty of the Department of Clinical Education will guide you through these rapidly changing times and we pledge that we will offer you clinical experiences that are dynamic, progressive, and enriching. However, we can't do it alone. You must recognize that you are also responsible for your growth and development. And if you accept that responsibility, you will not only succeed, but you will excel in our exceptional program. Once again, congratulations from me and from the faculty of the Department of Clinical Education. I wish you all the best of luck this year and in the future. Welcome, I'm Dr. Samara Wad, class of 1992, president of Alumni Association and member of the Optometric Center of New York Board. On behalf of both organizations, it is my pleasure to congratulate you on achieving this milestone that marks the transition from classroom to your clinical training. You'll be learning the diagnostic and treatment skills necessary to help your patient's ocular health and vision. Optometry is a unique medical specialty in that the patient immediately benefits from our abilities to improve the gift of sight, an envious position in comparison to other medical specialties. The Alumni Association, with the support of the Optometric Center of New York, have gifted white coats to you. Every time you wear your coat, please know that over 3,400 SUNY alumni are wishing you well on your journey to becoming an optometrist. The alumni appreciate your hard work and are here to support you. We are only a phone call or email away. We are proud of the resilience you have shown during these unprecedented times, and this virtual ceremony will be a more remarkable piece of SUNY optometry history. We look forward to celebrating more of your accomplishments with you. Best wishes for a wonderful year. Thank you. Thank you, Drs. Viswanathan, Madonna, and Awad for your thoughtful remarks. Receiving the white coat symbolizes an important transition in your academic and clinical education. You are now in the threshold of your careers in patient care. While this is a different ceremony from past years, it's every bit as significant and important. Please reflect on the white coat as a reminder of what it means to be a professional healthcare provider. Always put your patients first, and always strive to give them the best possible care they can receive. So it is with great pleasure that I and the clinic chiefs present to you your white coats. I hope you are sharing this moment with family and friends to celebrate all of the hard work you've done to get to this point. Congratulations and good luck with the rest of the program.
Thank you. 
I freely and solemnly pledge that I affirm that the health of my patients will be my first consideration. I will practice the art and science of optometry faithfully and conscientiously and to the fullest scope of my competence. I will uphold and honorably promote, by example and action, the highest standards, ethics, and ideals of my chosen profession and the honor of the degree, Doctor of Optometry, which has been granted to me. I will provide professional care for those who seek my services with concern, with compassion, and with due regard for their human rights and dignity. I will place the treatment of those who seek my care above personal gain and strive to see that none shall lack proper care. I will hold as privileged and inviolable all information entrusted in me in confidence by my patients. I will advise my patients fully and honestly, all of which may serve to restore, maintain, or enhance their vision and general health. I will strive continuously to broaden my knowledge and skills so that my patients may benefit from all new and efficacious means to enhance the care of human vision. I will share information cordially and unselfishly with my fellow optometrists and other professionals for the benefit of patients and the advancement of human knowledge and welfare. I will do my utmost to serve my community, my country, and humankind as a citizen as well as an optometrist. I hereby commit myself to be steadfast in the performance of this, my solemn oath and obligation. One of the traditions of the white coat ceremony is the toasting of the class. And each year I charge the class with coming up with the selection of the faculty member <clears throat> um, who will lead us in the toast. I ask them to consider the faculty who has had a significant influence on their professional development. The class of 2022 has chosen Dr. Richard Madonna for this honor. So I invite everyone to raise their glasses there, to now lead us in that honor. Thank you, Dr. McGovern. And first of all, to you and Ms. Rigney and Fiona and Julie and whoever else was involved in putting this together, you really pulled it off. Um, so congratulations on that. Uh, class of 2022, I guess I should raise my glass first. So here it is. Um, I first want to thank you for choosing me to offer this toast. It really is a great honor. You guys have been forced to wait patiently for this moment, and I'm sure that you never envisioned that this event would take place the way that it is. But here we are with more family, more friends, more faculty and staff able to attend than we ever would have been able to have in different circumstances. So let's be thankful for that. And, you know, over the last few months, you guys have had to go virtual. You've had to come in and practice, volunteer, wait to get into clinic, be ready to get into clinic. And through all of that, you navigated it all by embracing the qualities that the white coat stands for, as Dr. McGovern described before. And you should all be applauded for that. So here's my toast. My hope is that your white coat will remind you of the very special place you will have in the lives of your patients and their families and your opportunity to make a difference in those lives. This toast will have met its goal if you don't forget that. Congratulations to all of you and best of luck. Cheers. Good afternoon. I am Liv Divina Martinez Gonzalez. I'm the Vice President for Clinical Administration and the Executive Director of the University Eye Center. I am very honored to be part of this ceremony today, and I'd like to thank all of our speakers for sharing their words of wisdom and encouragement. I hope that their words reinforce what a true privilege it is to be part of an optometric profession and what an amazing and rewarding journey you have ahead of you. You've worked very hard and the transition from the classroom to the clinic is a significant milestone. I look forward to your full involvement in providing care to the patients of the University Eye Center and being part of our healthcare team. Many individuals have helped you get to this point. 
Our faculty, your parents, significant others, and friends have provided you with guidance, support, and encouragement throughout. We're all proud of your accomplishments to date and look forward to working with you over the next two years of your program. While today's ceremony is not in person and different from previous ceremonies, the faculty and staff have put together a heartfelt and memorable program to celebrate the class of 2022. Congratulations to you all. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank the media and communications team for their work to ensure that today's ceremony went off without too many hitches. I would especially like to thank Dr. McGovern for putting his, this ceremony together. He worked very closely with your class president and I commend his leadership and commitment to our students. And now I'd like to invite you to stay on for a short photo montage of the past two years of this class. You may notice that no one is wearing masks or protective equipment in these pictures. Fortunately, the montage was put together pre-pandemic, so we all get to enjoy seeing all of their great smiles. Again, congratulations and thank you for joining us today.